On February 14, 2023, residents of the Chatham Central School District will decide on a proposed capital project. It would improve Chatham's educational facilities and address issues with the district's aging infrastructure. There is also a second proposition to install air conditioning at the Mary E. Dardis Elementary School. Along with keeping our buildings operationally safe and efficient, the goal of this project is to make our facilities future ready, allowing us to advance our instructional programs. The first proposition includes $18.2 million of work at the high school, elementary school, middle school, and bus garage. The high school building hasn't seen significant renovations since it was built 50 years ago. The building's entire roof would be replaced. It's out of warranty and uh, we've been doing some patching on it for the last few years. Um, you can see some of the patching here. You can see some of the delamination of the, of the uh, insulation. In the auditorium, the audience seats would be replaced. The seats we have right now, you can see there's stains on them. They're old, they're worn out, and some of them are even broken. The worn carpeting would be replaced and the flooring would be resurfaced. This is a place where our community and other communities come in and are welcomed into our building and we want to put our best foot forward. Technology room upgrades include renovations to the shop. It was originally designed to be a wood shop. We're trying to do things in the space that weren't really meant to be done in the space. The technology computer lab will also be relocated. It is currently in a different part of the building. With these renovations, the computer lab will be moved next to the shop to create an integrated STEM suite. This building project will, will solve a lot of our issues in that, in, in this space. We, we can do multiple projects, multiple activities. One and two. The band and choir rooms will be renovated to allow for better use of the space. This space hasn't been updated since before I was born. The risers in both rooms would be removed. It would allow for people with disabilities or injuries to like, easily be able to like, um, access the different like, instruments and it would also give everyone else a better space because it would allow them to be like, more spread out and not like, confined to the different levels. Each room would see many improvements including new acoustic ceilings and wall treatments, improved storage spaces, better lighting, and dedicated instruction walls. Many classrooms currently have movable partition walls. We are going to take some notes and start reading Frankenstein. The problem is that you can hear a lot of the other noises from the other classrooms, which is a huge distraction. The partitions are original to the building. They are thin and have gaps around their edges. So I remember in English taking a test and there was a video playing next door and it was very loud and it was very hard to focus on the test. This project would replace the partition walls with permanent, secure, fire-rated conventional walls. In the gymnasium, the original wood floor would be replaced. The bleachers would also be replaced. While they look okay and they, they are safe to operate, they're starting to have issues with the frame underneath. It's getting difficult to operate. The gym's air handling units would also be replaced. The high school's four science classrooms would be modernized. Dr. D'Angelo, from the very beginning, involved teachers who would be impacted by the capital project. The architects walked with each of us in our rooms to talk about the, the challenges and the possibilities and you know together we came up with the, the current proposal. The building's two art classrooms would also see improvements. There's no space to be able to have the video or information from a slideshow going on, display the student artwork, talk about what's happening and also draw at the same time. Worn and outdated bathrooms would be renovated to improve accessibility and overall functionality. The entrance of the high school would be modernized with the addition of a canopy. The lobby would also be updated to give the building a more contemporary look and inviting feel. When I saw the vision that the architects had, it felt really more embracing of students and our community coming in. It's the first place you see when you walk into the school. I think it would help us have more school pride and bring us all together more. Several exterior improvements are also planned. They include milling and repaving the parking lot, repairs to the curbing, and replacing the stucco panels on the building with metal panels. The emergency backup generator would also be replaced with one that is capable of powering the entire building. At the elementary school, the flooring in the hallways and the lobby area would be replaced. 
This work includes the removal and abatement of the building's original asbestos flooring that is encapsulated under the current flooring. The gymnasium would also be repainted. Outside would see stucco repairs and painting around the full perimeter of the building. Masonry repairs would be made at the gymnasium. The sidewalk and curbing would be repaired, and the chain link fence between the elementary school and the high school parking lot would be replaced. At the middle school, the original lintels above the windows on the 1915 section of the building would be replaced. It's a pretty important part of the building and, and definitely needs to be addressed. These architectural features are more than 100 years old. They've started to sag, crack, and spall, creating both structural and safety concerns. At the bus garage, the transportation offices, break room, and restrooms would be renovated and the old siding on the rear and side of the building would be replaced. And we want to be proud of our school district, and we feel that upgrading these areas are very important to projecting a sense of pride within the community. Financially speaking, as a capital project, this work is eligible for 50% state building aid. This means the district would get about half of the project's total cost back from the state. The district would also use $8.4 million that was previously set aside in voter-approved capital reserve funds. Altogether, the project would require a tax increase of $7.79 per $100,000 of assessed property value. For example, a home valued at $300,000 would see its annual school taxes increase by approximately $23.37. We can no longer provide state-of-the-art instruction in facilities that were built 50 years ago. A second proposition on the ballot will ask voters to decide on the installation of a heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system at the elementary school. The students have a hard time with the heat. I have to do a lot of quick changes when I feel like we're getting a little too warm in one setting, move to another subject, or move outside, or move to like on the floor, we'll do some group work. There we go! Providing an environment where staff and students are comfortable is essential to good learning and working. The new system would not only provide the building with air conditioning, but also advanced year-round air filtration and ventilation. I think it would allow me personally as an educator in the classroom to get more done academically, as well as um, not have those distractions of having the windows open or the doors open. This project would cost approximately $3.9 million and is also eligible for 50% state aid. Proposition 2 would require an additional tax increase of $9.36 per $100,000 of assessed property value. This means a home valued at $300,000 would see its annual school taxes increase by another $28.08. The first proposition must pass in order for Proposition 2 to pass. If Proposition 1 passes but the second one fails, only the work under the first proposition would be completed. For more information on this capital project, visit our district website, chathamcentralschools.com, and check your mail for our capital project newsletter in January. We would greatly appreciate it if you would come out and vote. Your vote matters. Voting will take place in the Mary E. Dardis Elementary Gym from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Thank you.